The Magic Show is brought to you by StarCityGames.com, and check this out. On Saturday, September 6th, Your Move Games will host the first ever 5K Magic Day in Massachusetts. This event is open to all players and is expected to be huge, so mark your calendars and they'll see you there. Hi, this is Billy Moreno. Welcome to The Magic Show. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of The Magic Show. It's time to get into the swing of things with our first non-live show in a month. Wow, I almost forgot how to do this stuff. Anyway, this week we're going to take a long look at the new MagicTheGathering.com, check out Benjamin Peebles Mundy's draft tools for Magic Online 3.0, discuss the latest shards of Alara spoilers, and detail a brand new way you can support the show. Let's go! <laughs> This is exhausting. Every time Wizards of the Coast comes out with a new product, why am I scared to death? I mean, let's face it, Magic Online and Gleamax were no walks in the park. But hey, the new MagicTheGathering.com is coming! They're going to fix all the problems they have with Gleamax and Magic Online, and they're going to have this really cool, nice, simple, easy to use... <laughs> Damn it, Wizards! This is what you give us? This. Seriously. This flash beholden monster of a website? Good lord. Let's take this one point at a time. First, let's talk about the flash-based nature of the site. Now, I want to perform a little experiment right now, and I want you to play along at home, okay? I want you to think of your favorite websites. You know, the ones you go to every day, you get really excited about, you want to see what they got new and their content and all that good stuff. Well, I want you to think of those websites, and I want to think of how many of those have a flash intro on them. You got your number yet? I'm guessing it's zero. Okay, okay, okay. So you counter with, it's a game website. It's not just like, you know, Slashdot or CNN. I mean, we're talking about this is for the game, right? Okay, okay. So so let's take, for instance, a game, okay? So let's go to worldofwarcraft.com, right? And you go to worldofwarcraft.com, and there is a splash page. Whoa, whoa. You are so proven right. No, no, no. But, but at the very top of the splash page, you notice something there? It says, continue to worldofwarcraft.com. And you might also notice that it's not flash-based. But anyway, and then you you visit worldofwarcraft.com again, say, the next day, uh, it doesn't actually show you that splash screen anymore. It actually sets a cookie so that it doesn't bug you next time. Now, it may seem silly to harp on Flash this much, okay? But there isn't so much as a banner on the top of the screen that allows us to skip it. There isn't a little checkbox that says, please don't ever show this again for the rest of my life. Thank you. But the worst part, the worst part is that when you go to magicgathering.com, the actual link to the site, you know, the one you're looking for, is below the fold. That means this flash intro is so tall that when you first go to the site, you're probably not going to see the link to magicgathering.com. I don't know why that is. Damn. Now, before I let this go, and God knows I've beat this horse about as much as you can beat one, one last point. On this extremely magical intro, we have three options. We have Planeswalkers, we have Planes of the Multiverse, and we have the Colors of Mana. Now, you know what isn't listed on those three? What is magic? What is the game? What in the hell Magic the Gathering is because because the best part is when you actually click to, you know, the real site, you know, what you're looking for, uh, you see a little banner down there that says, what is magic? You know where you might want to put that? On the frickin' homepage. Mm -hmm. All right, all right, last point, okay? Seriously. And I mean this with all due respect. Why are you guys hiding your content? Seriously, I can't. Like, it's a maze to get to one article now. It's an actual chore. I actually don't look forward to going to the site anymore because I have to find my way through the myriad depths and click like four times to get what I could used to get to in one click. I don't, I don't understand why that's better than what it used to be before. Because it takes several clicks to actually find this content. You know, content that you don't mention anywhere else on the site. And quite frankly, I'm astounded that you took what I thought was the centerpiece of the old website. You know, the reason we came back there every day, which was your daily content. And you put it as far deep as you possibly could into this new one. I mean, I don't have to remind you that you pay good money for that content that you hide deep in the levels inside your website, right? 
What I'm saying is that this stuff should be on the home page, or at least links to it or something. How about getting rid of that stupid download section? I mean, does anyone really use that? And does anyone really like the fact that when you click on one of those icons, it brings up a zip file instead of, say, I don't know, a page of resolutions to choose from, which is sort of what I was expecting. When you click on an icon and you don't know what it does, that's called mystery meat navigation, and it's not fun to use or explain, and this website has a lot of it. I got an idea. Why don't we just get rid of this silly download section thing and actually uh, advertise the content that you pay for every single day and put that up there? Or how about adding another like smoky, glowy thingamabob in the flash mist that says, what is magic? So someone can figure that out without having to click on the little button below the fold. Or how about we make the daily MTG page the home page, post flash intro if you must, but at the very least, try to steer people towards this awesome content that you produce day in and day out. Okay, okay, so I have complained my little head off, right? So what do I love about the new site? Because there is something, and I'll tell you exactly what it is. It is the draft simulator. Wow, how freaking cool is that thing? It was exactly what was promised. They were going to bring a new draft every week with AI opponents that you could then share with your friends to compare your drafts with, and I think it's awesome. The ability to copy your draft into form tag text is just killer. The ability to email it to my buddies or to compare with them or to check it out other builds, and all of a sudden people see things like, well, you know, I'm, I drafted this way, and now, now I'm going to draft five color legacy weapon because I know I'm going to open a legacy weapon. And while that sort of cheats the system, at the same time, it's still really interesting. So I would like to say kudos to Wizard of the Coast. I would like to congratulate whoever created the draft simulator because it's an awesome idea. And I can only hope that development can continue and we'll use different sets instead of 10th edition, that the AI will get better, um, and that maybe one day we can actually have a collaborative online draft system, which I think would be pretty cool, even if it's just, you know, fantasy-based. Now, I could go on but I won't. I know you got it in you, wizards. How about next time we be a little less flash heavy and a little more content heavy? It helps all around. <laughs>Weeks ago, our own Benjamin Peebles Monday took a look at the new Record Your Drafts feature found in the gameplay settings of Magic Online 3.0. It turns out that this feature created a simple text file of your drafts, what you saw and what you chose. However, as cool as this file is, it's a little difficult in its formatting. This is where Ben comes in for the rescue. On his site, www.zzbaloob.com, Ben's tools allow you to take this raw text data and turn it into an easier plain text format for emailing. Forum tagged output for your favorite boards, image output for HTML eyes in your draft, and Star City Games output for those who want HTML in the same way that drafts are presented in the columns on StarCityGames.com. All I can say is, this is freaking fantastic. The ability to both record drafts and now have the tools to send them via email or post them on forums has led me to actually draft on Magic Online again and makes me want to draft more often. So kudos to Wizards of the Coast for this great feature and for Benjamin P. Monday and his awesome tools. Now we have not one, but two Drafting With series at Star City Games Premium every day for you to peruse, and all thanks to this effort. Okay, everybody, it's that time again. Shards of Alara is coming up, and it's quickly appearing that Shards of Alara is actually Plane Shift 2.0. And by that, I mean a ton of mana symbols, particularly those of the friendly variety, scattered across all colors. The skinny is this. Each tricolor section of the color pine, which is a primary color and its friendly colors, represents a shard on Alara. These shards have broken off from one another, so the green-white-blue shard, for example, has never seen the red-black-blue shard. Suddenly, these shards collide or something, and all hell breaks loose. All I know is it looks freaking gorgeous and the story sounds awesome. So what about those preview cards and what do they show us? Let's first take a look at Rock's War Monk. Now this is the perfect example of Shards of Alara and its design. A ton of mana symbols and a simple but powerful creature. Three mana, three, four lifelink? I'm digging it. By the same token, let's check out Tower Gargoyle. Now this says a lot about the blue shard Esper and its makeup. This is a 4-mana flying artifact creature for a colorless white, blue, and black. I repeat, this is a multicolor artifact creature. Sure, they were introduced in Ravnica with Transguild Courier, leading further into Scrap Basket, but this time they've gone all out. Every Esper creature, it appears, will also be an artifact creature. Each Esper card will also be an artifact. Let's take a look at Courier's Capsule, sure to rock standard in the upcoming months. 
Thanks to the Orb of Insight, we also learned that while the FNM Thirst for Knowledge looked Shard-esque, it is not in Shards of Alara. Rather, we have some more interesting cards to devour, such as this next one called Goblin Assault. And while this looks like Bitter Blossom 2.0, and some are calling it that with the ability to go first turn Lanamor Elves and second turn Goblin Assault, remember the key line that stopped Nom Nom from succeeding. It must attack each turn if able. That is a huge beating. Sometimes Bitter Blossom was fantastic because it was essentially force field, as blocking definitely matters in today's metagame. It's cute that you can appear to get a heavy edge early, but after that, this enchantment may not pay off. However, remember with Bitter Blossom, everyone dismissed it as being too detrimental in upkeep with its life loss. And this one doesn't even have an upkeep payment. I can imagine turn 2 and turn 3 Goblin Assault would be pretty damn scary, but turn 2 and turn 3 Bitter Blossom always seems to be scarier, life loss or no. Evasion and the ability to block are pretty important, I hear. Lastly, we take a look at a brand new Planeswalker. Yeah, it's blue, and of course, it's nuts. Check it out. Now, this guy, like most Planeswalkers, may seem a bit unimpressive at first. Remember, Garrick was extremely underrated for some time after the release of Lorwyn. However, with Shards of Alara's insistence on having blue artifacts, as well as their creatures all be artifact in nature, this is about as close as we've seen to a blue Garrick. But that's not all, of course. This guy will be powerful and extended as he can quickly and easily search up artifacts like Tormod's Crypt, Pithy Needle, Umazawa Jite, Sword of Fire and Ice, and more. Also note that he's Flame Javelin proof. As long as you activate his first ability before passing priority, this guy isn't going down without at least two burn spells or a hit from Demigod of Revenge. There's even talk of this guy in Vintage. Yes, Vintage, as the ability to tutor up artifacts and put them into play seems pretty good in that format. Go find Time Vault, take an extra turn, and then untap it with Tezzeret's first ability next turn and go nuts? Yeah, this is a Planeswalker that is truly scary. <laughs> To wrap up this week, I'd like to announce that MrOrangeProductions.com is officially launched. This is my website for all things video that I do, including directing, editing, producing, and so on. Believe it or not, I do actually produce more than just the show. This site also allows me to do things such as recant stories about the first few magic shows, a continuing series, but it most importantly affords me a unique style of fundraising. Yeah, it's that time again. I'd really like to make it to Berlin for the Pro Tour, but I can't without your help. However, I want to do something a bit more involved than just asking for X dollars, as there are more pro tours and exotic locations in the future, and instead I'm offering the ability to support the show each week through the purchase of trinkets. Little icons that will display beneath the show containing a personal message from yourself. You'll also get your name in the credits of the show in which the trinket was displayed. These graphical trinkets are priced from 5 bucks to 75 bucks, all based on the goofy nicknames I've given cards over the years. Also, if there are any talented graphic artists out there who would like to design higher quality or better looking trinkets, I would be in your debt. I honestly don't like to ask for donations, but many viewers have encouraged me to do so, and this is my compromise. I won't hit you up for X dollars. I'd rather give you a platform for support at whatever donation level you feel is appropriate, and go from there. So that'll do it for another week of The Magic Show, folks. I'd like to thank you for watching, and do hope you buy a trinket or two in hopes of taking me to Germany. Until next time, Magic players, this is Evan Irwin, tapping the cards so you don't have to. I always like the fatties.